Question is from Oliver J. Murph. Can you build a good core by only doing compound lifts and mobility exercises like the ones in MAPS Prime? Or should you incorporate special ab and core exercises as well? So I used to, for a while, uh, I was in this camp. And I did heavy mm -hmm. squats, heavy deadlifts, heavy overhead presses. Yeah, Because you're stabilizing all that weight with your core. You are, right? So my core is strong enough to stabilize a 350-pound squat or a 500-pound deadlift or overhead press or whatever. And so I'm like, okay, my core is perfectly strong. And then at some point, I wanted to start developing my abs so that they could become more visible. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'm going to start doing some more direct work. And I realized just how weak my abs were. Mm -hmm. because uh, when you get stronger, you, you, the strength that you gain tends to be quite pretty specific to the, to the way you're gaining that strength or to the stimulus. Mm -hmm. So my core was strong to stabilize for squats, deadlifts, and overhead presses, but it wasn't super strong to do crunches and leg raises and, you know, and cable chops because I never did them. Well, think of it no different than any other muscle. Imagine if the only type of exercises you did for your isometrics. biceps were isometrics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you only did, now you could, you could actually build a little bit of muscle and you could have sure. decent, decently strong biceps by doing just isometric holds for your bicep. You could get some value out of that. But you're missing out you're on limited. A, yeah, you're missing out on a tremendous by not using the the all of the full range of motion and the eccentric and centric portion of the exercise. So isometric is one of the three and one of the more important ones for sure. And I think you can get by. Like at least you have some core work being done there. If you're if you're squatting 350 pounds or deadlifting 500 pounds, you definitely got a pretty strong core to stabilize and support. But it's not going to contract very well or decelerate really well. So, you know, there's so, there's definitely value in that. Th this is an area, if I'm being completely transparent with my own programming, that I'm I neglect. I'm bad at, and I know I need to do it better. And I can always tell when I've been neglecting it for a really long time is my low back starts to bother me. Mm. Yeah, and because I have that anterior pelvic tilt. And, you know, sure, I can hold my core in that position, but I, uh, to correct that, I should be doing like reverse crunches a lot more than what I'm what I'm currently doing. And whenever I get on it and I start to incorporate it in my routine, I always feel the relief mm -hmm. because it, it better supports my low back. I was too. just talking to Sal about this. I've been a little bit more intentional about putting like sit-ups and crunches and, uh, you know, rotational moves, uh, you know, like wood chops and things like that into my routine again because of that simple fact of like already trying to address my posture just from sitting more often. And then, you know, also sitting in my truck and like commuting back and forth and, you know, already starting to feel the effects of that on, on my joints and like just the way that, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning having certain pains I shouldn't have, but it's really like, I need to put more emphasis and attention back on, you know, my core and stability. Well, here's an example of like where I, and I, it's like, I'm so aware of this. Like, so when I hold Max, like when I get him up in the middle of the night and I kind of have to rock him to sleep and he's, he's in front of me, right? After about like five or 10 minutes, I start to feel my low back. And the way I relieve that is I squeeze my glutes and I, and I ro rotate mm -hmm. my pelvis under, which is activating my lower abdominals to kind of rotate my pelvis. And that, that's because I'm weak there because I don't train it. So default is it kicks out. Mm -hmm. I'm holding a baby in front of me. Now I feel this low back on it. Right. Yeah. And then I feel this in my low back. And so now at least I'm aware of that and I can, and I can, while I'm holding him, I'll actually almost do like an ab crunch while I'm sitting there rocking him to try and get some work out of it. But that's always a glaring, glaring to me that I'm not doing enough work on my, my abs. And just because I heavy deadlift mm -hmm. and squat, it's not enough for, for support. Yeah. You know where this came from, right? Where this, this myth or whatever came from, it came from power lifters. It came from power lifters who didn't want to work out their abs. Yeah, it's no basically true. You know, I, I squat, deadlift, and overhead, you know, bench press, and do all these. Over I don't need to do abs. Plus, I have a belly anyway. This is kind of a stereotype, but a lot of power lifters really don't care too much about aesthetics. Yeah. It makes sense. Your 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 sport is to it's lift a pretty the max, true stereotype. Uh, yeah, and to lift the max weight, right? Although I do know some really lean power lifters. A lot of them could care less, and so abs is kind of like a show muscle. Fucking Ben Pollock, bro. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, he's he's a unicorn. Yeah, and it, you know what? Also reminds me. It reminds me. Yeah, of, but look at all the work he does on his abs. Yeah, you ever? Oh, have you well, ever he knows. He have, does. No, have you ever talked to Ben? Like Ben, that's in everything. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why part of the, we there's planks and that there's ab work in all of his stuff that he does. Right, he's incredibly right. strong abs. And 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 uh, this also reminds me of athletes who are like don't don't like to work out their biceps. Why do I work out my biceps? That's a that's a bodybuilder muscle. Well, your biceps help stabilize the elbow. It helps decelerate extension. So if you're a boxer 
or football players a lot of times don't want to work their biceps because it's all about pushing. But you notice more injuries when you have imbalances. It's really, you know, here's the thing, and we all have this. We all have the body part. We don't necessarily like to work as much as the others. But really, if you want to maximize the your your potential for performance, minimize your risk of injury, balance is the key. And regardless of what you do, that means you should train the whole body, including the core. That's right. Yeah. Calves are the only worthless one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just be born with it.